Good afternoon. Welcome members and guests to the Rotary Club of York, the 26th largest Rotary Club in the world, and more importantly, a club dedicated to imagining and living out the Rotary mission of service above self. I'm Glenn Miller, the club president. Our opening song today, America the Beautiful, will be led by our president-elect, Aaron Jacobs. Our invocation will be led by our past president, Jackie Summers, and our visitors will be introduced by Matt Falvey. Please take a moment to silence your electronic devices. Thank you, President Glenn. Rotarians, please join me. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountains, majesties above the fruited plain. America, America, God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Hello, please join me in a word of prayer. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for this time of fellowship and friendship. We're grateful for the many ways you open our hearts to the cares of the world and the role we are guided to play in ensuring a meaningful path for all we are called to serve. And may we be a light for future generations. We lift up our speaker who is dedicated to meeting the needs of adults as they age, we thank her organization for providing information and opportunities and for showing our aging citizens the honor and respect they deserve. Be our strength when we falter, love for those in division, be our comfort when we grieve and transform our fear into faith in all circumstances of our lives. Please bless this food and the hands who have prepared and served it. To you, we commend this time and thank you for your presence with us today and always, amen. I'm pleased to have the honor of introducing our guests for today's meeting. So for visitors, when I call your name, please stand and remain standing until President Glenn has welcomed you. So that being said, Ludmila Palaska from Maristed uh, Rotary in Sweden. Robert Brick, guest of Youth Leadership. Adrian Buckner, guest of Jane Conover. Tim Bupp, guest of Jane Conover. Randy Friedman, guest of Jane Conover, Linda Grove, guest of Aaron Jacobs, Claire Hardinger, or Hardinger, uh, guest of Youth Leadership, Jeremiah Hitz, guest of Youth Leadership, Hannah Kuzmiak, guest of Youth Leadership, Carol Miller, guest of President Glenn Miller, Roth Prapp, guest of Jane Conover, Tom Russell, guest of Jackie Summers. Julia Ryer, guest of youth leadership, Emily Schlosser, guest of youth leadership, and Aaron Titter, guest of Glenn Miller. Welcome to uh, so welcome to our guest for joining us today. We're happy to have you here and know you'll enjoy today's program and we hope you'll return again often. Member, please help us welcome our guests. Friends, we are delighted to have you here today. I should um, note that Aaron Titter is uh, actually a brand spanking new member of this club. Uh, happy to have singled you out, Aaron, but uh, uh, you are no longer a guest. Those of you who are guests, we are delighted you are here again, and we hope that you will return 
many times, either as a visitor or even better as a member of our club. Rotarians, please help me once again welcome our visitors. Now, before we uh, end visitor introductions, I would like to take a moment to uh, single out uh, Ludmila. Besides getting the award for coming the farthest for this meeting, uh, I don't think anybody can beat you out on that today. Uh, Ludmilla is in York for the York premiere of her exhibit, Icons of Transformation, which will be on display at St. John the Baptist Episcopal Church right here in York from August 21st through uh, October the 30th. Uh, this uh, exhibit has uh, toured in many cathedrals and museums throughout Europe. Flyers about the free exhibit are on your tables. Ludmila is a gifted artist who was inspired by the iconography of the Russian Orthodox Church. She and her husband, Jan Lech, run the Scandinavian Arts Center. And aren't you proud of us for getting through all of those names uh, today? She has uh, graciously brought her banner from her home club in Vodsboro to present to us, and we are delighted to present with her to, to her a banner from our club to take back to Sweden. Thank you very much. Thank you. A few announcements for the good of the order today. The Youth Exchange Committee will meet on August 18 at 12 noon via Zoom. The IDEA committee will meet on August the 22nd at 8 a.m. via Zoom. On September 14th, our club meeting hits the road. We are venturing to South County Brewing Company at their new facility uh, in Southern York County on Crossway Drive, just off of 83 in the Leader Heights exit. Optional tours and beer tastings are available at an extra charge following the meeting. You must register to attend, as is our custom for all off-site meetings, by contacting Becky in the Rotary office. You can simply send her an email saying you're coming. You can also, look how fancy we are now, scan the QR codes on each table for a di direct link to register. We are in the 21st century, friends. And now Bob Bacon will give us an update on our Love for Community event. Bob. Good afternoon. I'm here as a member of the uh, fundraising committee to advise you that we are looking very much forward to this great event we'll be holding here on September 12th. There are many activities that are going to be going on. We've added some. So we have the golf, tennis, pickleball, croquet, and cornhole. And along with dinner and drinks, which will start at 5 p.m. If you happen to be out on the course or in any one of these events, you can come into the uh, club and you don't have to change your clothes. You can, it's casual. So you can be very comfortable in that way. And if you join us for the events, that's great. But if you can't just come for dinner and you will hear from various people, including police commissioner Muldrow, and he'll talk about the community engagement center. And we once again, from the York City Youth and York College graduate, Raven Dixon, and he'll tell us what this center will mean to the people that it's being built for. The uh, contribution to this event, uh, the fundraising will be used 100% for this uh, community function that is being developed. And uh, we will be entertained later by our own Chris Toth, who will deal with the uh, auction. We have many great Gifts, not gifts, but if you buy them, they won't be a gift. <laughs> including a three-night stay at President Glenn's home in Cape May. So we hope you all can participate and have a great day on September 12th. Thank you.
Thank you, Bob. If you've been to the event in the past, you know that Chris is nothing if not entertaining uh, and has a wonderful way of uh, getting people to open their wallets during that uh, auction. So uh, things are going well, uh, but your participation is critical and we look forward to that. And uh, now we have a, an update from Kevin Apnell with uh, Youth Leadership and Ryla. Kevin. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so I want to thank everyone the for the club's generosity, uh, just the way that we have reached out and invested in our youth, who's going to be really the next wave of leaders coming up through uh, just different things like scholarship program, uh, youth exchange and youth leadership. Particularly this summer, we had sponsored eight students to attend the RILA conference at Messiah University and six of them were able to join us today so actually if I could have them come up as I, I'll just I'll just say the names of the eight that were here and they'll introduce themselves later but we had Julia and Robert from Central of uh, Central York rather we had Hannah and Jeremiah from West York we had Christopher and Emily from York Catholic and Claire and Stephen from Suburban unfortunately Christopher from York Catholic and Stephen from Suburban had other commitments they could not be here today but uh, what they've done is being the leaders that they are. I said, you know, if you want to have a spokesperson and one person speaks, that's fine. But they said, no, we'll all come up to the podium because they all just love being in front of all of you. And public speaking is, it's something that the youth are really into. I don't know if you knew this. They say it's gas. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I learned a new, I learned a new term today at my table. If something's really good, it's gas. So you can all use it and then they'll never use it again because um, it won't be cool as I found out. So um so I, I've challenged them to answer two questions in their remarks, and it's uh, how did this how did this RILA conference, this RILA opportunity help you to become a better leader, and then how do you plan to use that experience in the future? So without further delay, I'm going to get out of here, and I will invite the six of them up. You can all come up and stand in a group if you'd like and come up one by one to the podium. I'm going to go off to the side here and pretend that there's steps. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. We stand in front of you today as the youth you chose to sponsor for RILA, Rotary Youth Leadership Awards. We want to emphasize how grateful we are to all of you for giving us the opportunity of learning so much from this week-long conference. With that being said, we have a few words about what we took away from this occasion. The RILA camp experience for me helped develop my collaborative skills with other strong-willed individuals. If we are the leaders of tomorrow, it's potent that we can work together to accomplish the bigger goal. Through seminars, activities, and speeches, Ryla emphasized the importance of service above self. While the week was fun, we learned a lot of valuable lessons about how to be a good leader. Some include the reflection of your words before you speak, learning to put aside your own opinion for the greater good of the group, and keeping a cool head in times of adversity. In the future, I hope to apply these skills when I am put in a leadership role to ensure I'm serving others before myself and still accomplishing the goal at hand. Hello, my name's Emily and Ryla taught me so much about myself as I learned what it means to be a leader. I was able to bond with the other leaders throughout the week, learning more about other people's lives and pushing past stereotypes to see the goodness in every individual. Ryla gave me experience at taking initiative, which is very important to becoming a great leader, as well as confidence in yourself, which was stressed in the week we were there. Moving forward, I will be able to take the traits I, ha I have strengthened in my experience at Ryla, including co more confidence in myself, empathy, and open-mindedness. The emphasis on the community before self will help remind me to always serve others before myself, and will remind me that helping others is the best reward. I believe that attending Ryla has helped me become a better leader with more of a focus on helping those in need. Thank you, Ry Rotary members, for allowing me to attend this awesome weekend. It was very impactful. You have a leg. Is this mine too? Yeah. Little printer error. I'm Jeremy. I just wanted to say, Riley brought many leaders together from all different schools and groups, which pushed us, pushed us, sorry, 
to learn how to lead collaboratively and disperse tasks and initiatives throughout our groups. It taught me that everyone has different methods of completing tasks and that it's vital to include as many different people as possible. I learned when to take initiative as a leader and to know when someone else may be more qualified to do so. Coming out of Vila, I learned that it takes a lot of persistence to achieve the things that you really want. And it's always better to do something out of your comfort zone and not to not try anything new. Thank you. Hello, my name is Julia, and I just want to say that I learned so much about myself at Ryla. Through the various activities and meaningful speeches, I was able to refine my leadership skills as well as pick up some new ones. It was a chance for me to learn how to work collaboratively with other leaders as we try to reach a common goal. We all came to Ryla as strangers and left with friends and the leadership skills to last a lifetime. I was able to learn how to turn my determination into action and trust my other group members as we work together on many different activities. I learned that sometimes the best way to lead is just to simply listen to those around you. As we move forward, I will use the strategies and skills that I've gained from this experience to be a dynamic and impactful leader in my school and community. I will always remember to put others before myself in order to help them unlock their potential. I want to thank you once again for your continuous guidance and support as I had a great and unforgettable experience. Thank you. Hello, my name is Claire, and I'd like to say that Ryla opened up so many new doors for me, whether it was the countless connections I formed with fellow leaders or learning more about myself. This experience allowed me to learn more about my leadership styles and the skills I can improve on to become a better person. I learned to put service above myself, which sparked a stronger passion within me, no matter the organization or team that I'm taking part in. As I move into my senior year and the rest of my life, I'm taking all of the lessons from Ryla with me. If I'm in the classroom, out in the community, or on the tennis courts, I hope to spark more effective collaboration among others, teach others about my experience, and be an example so my peers and others in the community can lead the best lives for themselves and others whom they assist. Hello, I'm Robbie. The Ryla Camp was a great experience that not only allowed me to have fun, but helped me to learn about being a better leader. During our time, we were exposed to several different elements of how to be a good leader. Confidence, public speaking, taking initiative, and serving others over self. The activities we did helped us to get out of our comfort zone and become more confident in ourselves. One of the most important skills I learned during my time was the ability to work with other leaders like myself. And at first, it was a struggle because we were to pull together towards a common goal because we were all leaders in our own respective communities. But we figured it out in the end. These experiences will help us in the future as we finish up our senior year and move towards the next step, whatever that may be. On behalf of all of us, we would like to give a huge thank you to the Rotary Club for allowing us to attend this event. And a special thanks to Mr. Abnell and Mrs. Morrison. Let's give them a round of applause. This is all because of your efforts and support. So just want to say thank you to every Rotary member for continuing to invest in our next wave of leaders. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Can we give them all a round of applause, please? Thank you. Congratulations to all of you. You know, sometimes I think as a large club, uh, because we are doing so many wonderful uh, things on our own as a club, it's, it's easy to forget what the larger thing that we are a part of uh, when it comes to Rotary. And this is as fabulous of an example of the larger thing that we are a part of that you could possibly find. And Mike Summers, I know you're planning on bringing some candidates for political office in uh, for debates and speeches this fall. Maybe we scrap that and just elect these six kids to Congress. I'm, I'm just thinking it might not be a bad approach. <clears throat> Thank you very, very much. Well done. And so without any further ado, please welcome Rotarian Jane Conover, who will introduce our program and our speaker today. Jane. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it is my pleasure today to introduce you to Kathy Bollinger, who is our Managing Director of Embracing Aging Initiative at the Community Foundation. She is also the new Executive Director of an initiative called Trove Street. A native of York, Kathy has over 30 years experience facilitating important conversations and developing strategic responses to problems. 
Before joining the Community Foundation, she served as JCC's Director of Diversity and Organizational Development. Prior to that role, she worked on the Falsecraft Company in marketing and strategic planning. A driving force for Kathy's whole career has been fairness and inclusion. That's what makes her the perfect candidate and advocate for the elimination of ageism and the, for systems that enhance life for people as they age. Thanks to the Han Home Endowment and the vision of Anna Gardner, Kathy is now shaping your county into a more age inclusive community. She led the effort for your county to be designated by AARP as an age friendly community and has convened partners to implement this age friendly plan. Kathy serves on AARP Pennsylvania's Executive Council and has had articles published in online anti ageism websites. Senator Bob Casey selected Kathy to moderate a panel at a virtual aging conference, and she was one of four witnesses to present testimony at a hearing of the United States Senate Special Committee on Aging. Kathy will share with you more about her work and how Trove Street helps older adults develop plans for their later years. Please give a warm welcome to Kathy Bollinger. Thank you, Jane. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share information about Trove Street, a new entity of York County Community Foundation uh, with you today. It launched a couple months ago, and it is a resource to help everyone reimagine their aging experience. So at the Community Foundation, we work to create a vibrant York County. And one of the ways we do that is by investing in high impact initiatives. You heard Jane say that I lead the Embracing Aging Initiative, and I am so honored to carry on the legacy of donor Anna Gardner of the Han Home Fund supports the work of Embracing Aging. Next month, Embracing Aging is entering its 10th year of working to change culture on how people experience aging in the community. We do this by improving livability, such as the age-friendly plan that Jane mentioned. This is important because we need to have age-equitable decisions, community designs, infrastructures, policies for everyone to have the best quality of life as they grow older. We work a lot to reframe stigma on aging. Um, we try to reduce ageism and most importantly, improve positive age beliefs. And here's a little tidbit for everyone in the room. It's important to you to have positive age beliefs because on average, people with positive age beliefs live seven and a half years longer than people with neutral or negative beliefs on aging. So see, it's important to embrace growing older, right? We also provide grants to organizations that serve people age 50 and older. And to date, Embracing Aging has awarded nearly $2,100,000 in grants to organizations. And now with Trove Street, we are stepping out a little out of our comfort zone and doing something different where we're helping individuals plan for a better aging experience. So a question I always get is why Trove Street? What is this all about and where did it come from? A couple of years ago, we were approached by the York Housing Advisory Commission to do a session on senior housing in the community. And at first we were like, oh, no, I don't know if we're the right fit for this because traditionally the role of a, a community foundation is to be a funder, an advocate, a catalyst, a convener, but not an implementer. So we decided to pull some subject matter experts together and we decided that we would host this session, but we wanted to do it a little differently. We didn't want to have a session that was just for uh, providers of housing. We wanted to have a session for individuals and we wanted that session to be built on the concept of aging in place. And what this means is helping people live longer and stronger in the place that they call home, whatever that means to them. We felt that that was so key and important to do. This certainly fit with Anna Gardner's legacy, and it also fit with the findings from an embracing aging study that the YCCF commissioned before we even launched the initiative. 
So we went out that year and we presented four sessions to over 560 people age 50 and older. And it was so well received. And people were asking us in the following years, hey, were you doing more of those sessions? Or, wow, I remember you talking about this specific topic. We want to learn more. What can we do? So that was kind of the genesis for the idea of Trove Street. And a personal story, a genesis for me was as a young adult watching my older loved ones, my grandparents struggle because they didn't plan and they didn't take action before things happened to them as they aged. So taking all of this and then taking the work of embracing aging, I gotta tell you what I constantly hear when I'm out in the community is this. People all say they want to live long and joyful lives, but no one wants to admit that they like anything to do with aging, right? They're like, oh, they're dismayed at signs of aging in themselves and others. So sometimes people will um, uh, plan and save for retirement. But beyond that, a lot of times people don't do a whole lot having to do with aging. They don't want to think about it. So they're not taking into consideration how their uh, needs and their wants might change as they grow older and how these changes impact their quality of life as they grow older. So um, another thing happens then, what happens is that people are left making decisions during times of high stress and crisis. And Lots of times they're reactive decisions. Sometimes the older adults' wishes themselves aren't even carried out because no one knows what those wishes are. And this isn't okay. People settle for status quo. So let's look a little bit at statistics. We know that people are living longer lives, right? And that there's more older people alive today than ever before. As a matter of fact, more people over the age of 64 than under the age of five in the first time of the history of our country. So let's look at statistics. We know that three quarters of Americans age 50 and older want to remain living in their homes and their communities. But we know that many of those homes do not have features that will keep uh, people living there safely and comfortably as they age. In addition, AARP's research tells us that on average, a person will outlive their ability to drive safely by eight to 10 years. Yet most of the homes that we have aren't located close to a grocery store or a doctor's office or even public transit to take people to and from where they need and want to go. And also, more importantly, research tells us one of the key things to having the best quality aging possible is staying engaged, staying connected, doing the things that you want and enjoy doing. Now let's look at York County data. In York County, over 80% of older adults own their own homes. Over 50% of York County's 72 municipalities do not have regulations in place that can help people live more safely and comfortably in their homes and their communities. And then when you layer on that in York County, 36% of our older adults age 65 and older struggle to meet basic needs, we are so appreciative for the affordable housing providers that are out there and the affordable housing personal care providers that are out there, but there's not enough. As a matter of fact, we have 153 personal care beds for lower income people, not enough happening. So why did I share these statistics? We really need people to become advocates. We need people, adults of all ages, to really be thinking about what they need and want, step into their voice and let it be heard in our community. In York County, nearly 40% of our community is age 50 and older. So that's what Trove Street is all about. Trove Street envisions that everyone can have that best quality of life possible. We get that there's no right or wrong way to aging. There's certainly no one size fits all solution. And I have to tell you that everyone's journey is unique to them. So we need people to be part of planning for their journey. Now, at first we were like, okay, here's this thing again. Oh my gosh, community foundations, we typically don't implement. What are we doing? Is this the right fit for us? And we envisioned, so, you know, this going to another organization and us providing some grant funding. And, you know, when we stepped back, we realized that um, we're the best fit for moving this forward. And I have to say a huge thank you for, first of all, to the York County Community Foundation's Board of Directors, its leadership team, and to Embracing Aging's Distribution Committee 
for recognizing that this is a need and saying, yes, we support it and we will go out and we're going to, we're going to do this. This is a need in our community. So let me share with you Trove Street. It's a website and an interactive navigator service. www.trovestreet.com is the URL. So I'm just going to show you some snapshots. Everybody has brochures on the table. So if some of the print is small, uh, you can also check it out on your brochure on the table. When you go to the website homepage, you're going to see uh, you deserve to live your best life now and in the future, which is so true. Trove Street currently features five core features. I'm going to go over the features on the second line of what's on the screen first. We have events, but they're not uh, like regular events. They're events that help bring to life the information that people will learn about in the resource center. So it's meant to help people have more learning. A couple of weeks ago, we did a session called planning for your transportation future. So it kind of gives you a sense. On occasion, we'll have uh, exclusive offers and we have something called an interest survey. So we're in the process of changing over to a new provider from our development to our providers to support this. So in a week or two, if you go on to Trove Street under the interest survey, you can answer six to eight questions. And based on how you answer those questions, it will recommend to you information from the resource center so that you don't have to go searching and looking for the stuff that, that aligns with what you, you know, want to learn more about. It's automatically recommended to you. On the top line, resource center and planning services is what I'm gonna spend a couple minutes going over. So when you go into the resource center and I view the resource center as the heart and soul of what Trove Street is all about. Uh, when you go to it, you're gonna see it's divided into five uh, categories. Home and place, transportation, healthy living, joy and meaning, and money matters. Now, when you click on one of those, and for purposes of today's examples, I clicked on home and place, but no matter which category you click on, it's always going to have a headline, a sentence or two about that particular category, and then there's two buttons. The buttons that have to do with home and place, one is I want to optimize my current home, and the other is I want to explore other home options. So you can always click on the button that most aligns with what you're looking for. In this example, optimize my current home. If you click on that, there's subcategories. Today, right now, we have three subcategories. One is home repairs and modifications, in-home care and uh, location and access. Now for each of these subcategories, we have something called a Trove Street Wisdom article, where we worked with subject matter experts out in the community, plus taking our own learning from all the work that we've done over the years. And we created these wisdom articles, which are short reads that can help people learn more about a specific topic. And you can print them out with the uh, age-friendly print button there that you can certainly have them handy. You can also save them to a profile if you were to um, uh, start an account with Trove Street. So we have these Trove Street wisdom articles, which gives people the top things to know and consider the, the nuggets, the jewel of what's most important when making that decision. Under each then, of those subcategories, we have links. We have links out to resources in York County, resources across the Commonwealth, resources across the country, even across the world. These are external links, go to articles or reports or videos or uh, infographics, anything like that, that can help bring to life more of what that topic is all about. Again, it's meant to inform the user so that they can have all the information possible to make the best decision for them. Now, if we go back to home and place and we click on that other button, which is explore other home options, you'll see here the subcategories are, hey, I wanna learn more about moving into another home. So there's all sorts of things there and that includes sharing information about 50, 55 plus communities, rental properties and so forth available in our community. There's also moving in with friends and family, uh, something called an accessory dwelling unit, which is like a tiny house and uh, what you need to know if that might be an option that you might wanna use to move in with family or friends. 
Continuing care retirement communities is up there. Everything you need to know about making that decision. And then the last subcategory is personal care, assisted care, memory care, and um, uh, skilled care. And again, it holds true that under, whoops. There we go. Under those categories as well, we have links. So this was for the subcategory, I wanna move into another home or I, and there a guide to decluttering your home is something you might wanna explore or what is a mother-in-law suite or senior housing in York County, all sorts of different um, uh, links there. Under planning services, this is where we really wanna help people be able to organize their thoughts, organize their notes. So we have a downloadable PDF and also a printable version, and you can also save it online of a planning tool. And there's pages in this planning tool related to each of those topics or those categories in the resource center. So you can make notes of the things that you read about, or if there's a particular resource you wanna check out, you can list that. You can say, gosh, based on what I learned, this is what I want to explore for my own home to make it more livable. And you can just, you know, fill that out, kind of create your own work plan or your own blueprint, if you will, of what makes uh, it most important to you about your home and place and all those other categories. And what's really great about this is then this is also a tool that you can give to family and friends so that they know what your wishes are. And, you know, I even had one couple reach out to me, uh, a year or so ago after the other sessions that we had done. And they said, hey, do you have more copies of the packet that you gave that night? I want to have some friends over for dinner and some wine, and we're going to sit and work on this together. So what a cool way, you know, to spend your night to invest in your aging. Also under the Navigator Services, we have three Navigator resources. So you can come onto Trove Street and you can do it all on your own. You can engage with a, a navigator or you can do a combination of both. When you engage with a navigator, there's a free 15 minute service so that you can get an overview of Trove Street or get your most pressing questions asked about your aging experience. There's also one called Planning My Priorities. This is a paid service. It's a, a two half an hour sessions with a navigator plus the navigator's time before, in between and after to follow up and make certain that you get the answers that you need. And then we also have what's called an aging navigation plan creation service. This is three one hour services. And this is really engaging with a navigator to be with you to help you create your plan. When you look at our website, you're going to see that um, you can set up an account, as I mentioned. We also recognize that there's lots of people who don't have access to computers. So what I do and what we do is we go out with our computer and our hotspot on our phone and we show them the resource. We find out what uh, people are interested in. We print out the resources and we work with people individually that way. We also recognize that not everyone speaks English. So we have our whole entire homepage translated. And then we have an option at the bottom of the homepage translated in Spanish that says, if you want to see any other resources, reach out to us and we will get those translated. And we also are trying to be age friendly with having the text size that you can increase or decrease. So not only is embracing aging's work built on these beliefs, but we carry them over to Trove Street. Uh, if you really think about your aging, you have five core principles here. One is build community. So often we find that people stop making friends and they stop having connections as they grow older. We certainly encourage people to build community with people of all ages. It's so important to have different the friends of different generations. It's so better when we stay connected and it's so better when we are together. We ask people to focus on possibilities. Way too often we find that people let the number define them and they think that because they no longer look the way they did or maybe can uh, do some of the things that they could when they were younger that they lost their value. And that is not true. Uh, everyone has value. And as a matter of fact, as you age, I think you have a lot of wisdom, a lot of life story and experiences. We also ask people to not focus on what was lost but focus on what's possible, what remains. Finding joy, finding meaning in your life is so important. Staying engaged in your life. You know, that old saying out there, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. 
I don't like that saying that is false. That's not true. Uh, people can continue to learn and grow at any age. And that is so important for us to do as, uh, as we get older, it just adds to our quality of life. Another question I get frequently is why the name Trove Street? Where in the world did this come from? So Trove Street, first of all, when you trove treasure, you're like picking out things that are really important to you, appealing to you, nuggets that can help uh, bring value maybe to you. Uh, so that's where the, the trove part came from. Street is think of a friendly neighborhood, think of like the anchor. Uh, so that's where street came from, just that casual atmosphere. And then the owl in the logo is because not only of the wisdom that we gain as we grow older, it's because of the wisdom that we all get and the insight and the increased knowledge we get from just learning and reading stuff in the um, a resource center or attending events and things that can help us uh, put us in a better si uh, situation so that we can make more informed decisions. So a couple more slides here before I open it up for questions. One of the things that we're offering is, first of all, people ask, well, what age do you have to be to get on Trove Street? It's really for anybody, right, of all ages, and it benefits adults of all ages. Um, but we recognize that people 40 and 50s might be starting to care for older loved ones. So we're doing and offering a free lunch and learn session where we'll either do it by Zoom or come into the employer and do a brown bag, you know, or have employees bring their lunch and, and do a session over their lunch hour. And it introduces Trove Street, but more importantly with this lunch and learn session, it introduces strategies of how adult children can start to engage in the conversations with their older parents to get them thinking about their needs and their wants as they grow older. So we have that. And we also have a monthly e-newsletter and you can sign up at the bottom of uh, the Trove Street website. So I'd like to ask if you can do me a favor today. I'd like to ask for some of your help. First of all, spread the word about Trove Street. This is truly meant to be a resource for our residents, our York County community. It's meant to help us all have a better quality of life as we grow older. Give Trove Street a try. Go on, navigate it, reach out, let us know what did you like, what didn't hit the mark for you? What are we missing? Uh, we already are forming an ad hoc committee to think about, okay, what more articles do we need to be adding and topics do we need to cover? Ask us to come in and host that lunch and learn for your employees so that they can uh, be eased maybe of some of the worry and concern they might have for caring for their older uh, parents. Sign up for Trove Street's newsletter. And if you are on Facebook, you can follow us at Trove Street on Facebook. And speaking of Facebook, you can also follow Embracing Aging at YCCF, Embracing Aging on Facebook. All right, so reflection activity here. Everyone, you're 93 years old. You're 93. Think about where you currently live. Think about how you navigate through the community. Think about your current life. Who's going to help you change a ceiling light bulb? Who is going to uh, help get you to a doctor's appointment? How are you going to, or who are you going to have lunch with? How are you going to spend the hours of your day? And the key most important thing is, will you be able to look in the mirror and say to yourself, I did everything I could to maximize my aging experience? Because that's what Trove Street is meant to do, help you just reimagine and re-envision what it's like to grow older. Again, a huge thank you to the Community Foundation, to Jane for her leadership, the leadership team for the board of directors for Embracing Aging's Distribution Committee, uh, led by now Randy Freeman and our prior leader, Tim Bupp, who we just so appreciate for their support. And of course, Anna Gardner's vision and legacy that we carry out through the Han Home. Uh, we are so appreciative of them helping us bring this to fruition. We are also very appreciative for grants that we receive from the Memorial Health Fund um, also to help uh, to create and develop this. So with that, I'll ask, are there any questions? And thank you so much. Kathy, what are the key success metrics that you use to measure and evaluate the efficacy of growth screening? Yes. So the question is, what are the success metrics that we're going to be using to evaluate 
the efficacy or the success of Trove Street. So um, right now, because this is a relatively new uh, resource, we want to get traffic there. We want to get people using it. So we are tracking that, but we know that that's not exactly what is a key metric of success. Let me share with you, I'm going to answer this question in a way that helped us create Trove Street. When we were out doing those aging in place sessions that I referenced at the beginning, we were telling um, residents that if you think you want to have convert a garage to an apartment, or if you think you might want to put a tiny house on your property, you need to check and make certain that your uh, municipality has that in place, has a regulation in place to support that. Because many of them at that point in time, two thirds of them did not, okay, when we were doing that. So what happened was people started to go to their municipalities, their municipalities were getting questions. They're like, what's going on here? Where are these questions coming from? Why? They reached back out to York County Planning Commission and said, what is going on? All of a sudden we're getting all these questions. That to us is success. Changes, changes in um, systems, changes in people being able to have opportunities to have the best quality of life. If people say, look, we need more affordable housing, and it doesn't necessarily mean low income housing, but just more different uh, affordable housing types. Those are the types of things that we want to eventually get to. So those are the long term metrics. But for right now, we want people on that site, we want people accessing it, we want people engaging with a navigator. And we want to hear feedback from people that says, you know what, this is beneficial, this is helpful. So I hope that that answers your question. But wouldn't that be great to have everybody in the community step up and say, hey, this is what we need, York County. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to live in a community that has my back as I grow older. That helps adapt and helps welcome me and feel safe in the community. And that's what we eventually want to get to. Hi, Fran. Yes. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the question has to do with um, continuing care and that York County doesn't have a lot of offers right now for in-home cares. So uh, yes, so what we are trying to do is help people to understand and build awareness, first of all, about what to be looking for for in-home care, but second of all, to be stepping up and saying, you know what, um, this is what our need is. And ensuring that we have options that meet people's needs. So you're right, there isn't a lot of that. And I thought at first you were going to go the opposite way because on, in continuing care retirement communities, there's three different types and York County does not have one of those types. There's an A, B, and C, and York County either doesn't have the A or doesn't have the C. So that's at first where I thought you were going. But you're right, York County, we need to have more things, especially when you look at the demographics and the people who are going to be requiring this care. So what is it that we can do to help advocate for that? That's what we want people using Trove Street to help us do. Um, we can't do this on our own. We need to have the power of the residents of our community helping us to inform policies and decisions and help attract um, new in-home care providers to our community. Yes. Sure. So the question is, do we have a list of like, like Angie's list of people who can help with home repairs and modifications? So we do reference on Trove Street some of uh, the providers that are here in your county. What we most importantly do is reference that we, you know, something called an aging in place specialist certification and to be looking for that to ensure that those repairs and those modifications are best aligned with your needs and wants. We don't have a list that says, okay, here's all the providers, but we can get that for you. We have connections. We have links on our website, like to Seniors Blue Book and PA211 and other resources that list those. But Trove Street's helping to people to understand the why behind the decisions before you get to those lists. But if you want, we can find those and bring and give that to you. We're happy to, to provide that service. Other, uh, 
Sure, the question has to do, what has been Trove Street's engagement with other, uh, uh, like the Area Agency on Aging and other providers of aging care? So um, first of all, on Embracing Aging's uh, Distribution Committee and Advisory Committee, we do have uh, groups that represent some of, of um, those audiences that you mentioned. But then we also formed a steering committee when we did our feasibility study about creating Trove Street that did have the head of the Area Agency on Aging, AARP on it, someone from Rabbit Transit, someone from Senior Housing. So we had that, someone from a continuing care retirement community. We also then did user testing with individuals, three rounds of that while creating Trove Street. And we also did focus groups with service providers, again, reaching out to those stakeholders in the community so that we're constantly having their feedback uh, throughout the development of it. And they're partners with us. I mean, you go on here, you're going to see lots of links to the services that like the Area Agency on Aging provides or, uh, you know, other organizations in our community that uh, serve older adults. Yes. Yes, thank you so very much. I appreciate that question. I wanted to mention that, yes, I'm currently right now even piloting working with some individuals so that we can provide that service without uh, people uh, being paid for it. And that's part of, of our, our grant funding and our commitment to this, that we certainly want this to be accessible to people of all ages. So that is not a barrier. Yes. Hi, Michael. Yeah, so we looked to the National Aging in Place Council for those original workshops that we uh, conducted and led, and we looked to their model. So we built it off of that. We also built it off of, and oh my goodness, the name's going to escape me, but it's a higher, uh, a wellness wheel model of a doctor who looks at aging holistically. So it was also modeled off of that. To our knowledge, there isn't another model to this degree out there. We haven't been able to find it. Uh, certainly don't know of any other community foundation that is doing this in, in the country. So it's a unique, something unique to us and, and uh, we're really excited about it. Mm -hmm. To a degree, but it's certainly not meant to replace e any of those functions. It's meant to complement. It's meant to help people learn more so that they can ask the right questions of a professional advisor or their social worker, or that they can understand what their, their uh, you know, what is possible for them. Any other questions? Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Kathy. We had the privilege of working together in a number of arenas in the community, uh, including the uh, Rabbit Transit uh, organization. And I've seen firsthand Kathy's great passion for uh, this task, which was quite palpable in uh, your presentation. Uh, whatever our backgrounds or situations, there's no one in the room. All of you young people make special note. There's no one in the room who will not be affected by these uh, deeply personal issues of aging. Uh, and so thank you again, Kathy, for your presence and more importantly, for what you're doing with this uh, new program in the community. Kathy has signed the book for us. Epic Athletes, Simone Biles. Uh, and this will be presented to the Alexander D. Good Elementary School in honor of her visit with us today. Thank you again, Kathy. Let's give her another round of applause. Our program and presenter next week will be Leslie Davis, president and CEO of UPMC. UPMC is the largest non-governmental employer in the state, integrating more than 92,000 employees, 40 hospitals, 800 doctors, offices, and outpatient sites, and more than 4 million member insurance services division. 
In central Pennsylvania, UPMC has seven hospitals, more than 12,000 employees, and 260 primary care and specialty practices. Ms. Davis is going to highlight the growth of UPMC in the region and in York County in particular, and the many partnerships they have with organizations throughout the region that are helping to improve the health and well being of area residents. Before closing and ringing the bell, a uh, final time, a word of personal privilege, if you would. Uh, many, but not all of you have heard that on Friday, I will be entering York Hospital for some surgery, which will be followed by two to three weeks maximum, I hope, of recuperation. I'm deeply grateful to President-elect Aaron, who is going to uh, step in in my absence and to Lynn for keeping things running uh, smoothly in my absence. Let me say that if more than three weeks goes by and Aaron keeps coming to the podium saying that he's just not ready to come back, he's just not ready, maybe you should send an investigative team out to check that out. No, very, very glad for uh, your help. Look forward to being back soon. And, uh, and thanks uh, in advance, Gordon, for providing the staircase. I, I may need it in a few weeks. Uh, that adjourns this meeting. We are finished.